I'm going to let AI take my job for a week. With the emergence of AI tools that can write code, articles, and make beautiful pictures, people are afraid their jobs might get taken by a robot one day. And I'm one of those people. So I'm going to put it to the test and see if these tools can really do my job. And the timing couldn't be more perfect. I have a project for work that I've been procrastinating the entire year, and now, it's December. The project is to start a history-focused TikTok page. I need two viral hits, 10 videos, and I need to get to 1,000 followers. All in five days. Let's see if I can do this. Now, I should let you know, before I jumped into this, I really didn't know much about AI tools. I dabbled with a couple of them, but was far from an expert. And since we were on such a short time crunch, I had to learn how to use these tools on the go, which brought us to exploring ChatGPT. 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 If you haven't heard of this yet, it's probably the most popular AI tool that's out there right now. It got over a million users in less than a week. It's been used for tons of different things, from writing college essays to coding entire apps and it is stupidly simple all you need to do to get it to work is to speak to it in plain English it's basically like a sophisticated ask Jeeves or what we all really want Google to be so it was time to jump in and let's go tell me five interesting facts about World War II let's see what it gets okay so those aren't bad i don't know how interesting they are to be honest they're kind of surface level and basic the start of using chat gpt was a little rough yeah i don't know how i feel about that that's not uh exactly what i was looking for that one's pretty basic again pretty simple pretty basic i would say but as i started to talk to it a bit more and got more specific with my comments i did notice the results were way better it was almost as if i was learning a new language or learning to communicate with someone new i was starting to figure out how to get what i wanted out of chat gpt i think what i'm gonna try to ask it for is some content ideas and we'll see what that comes back with. The ideas I got from the AI were actually pretty good. Were they absolutely genius and something no one else could have come up with? Definitely not. But there were some solid ideas in there, and they were done so much quicker than it would have taken me to do them. And now that I had the ideas, it was time to write some scripts. Sir, let the AI write the scripts. Write me a 200 word script for a video titled Day in the Life of Queen Elizabeth. Imagine waking up as Queen Elizabeth I, one of the most powerful and influential rulers in history. Yeah, so it's not that bad. I would definitely make some changes because it doesn't have a strong hook at the start. It just isn't entertaining throughout, I would say, but I think it's something we can definitely work with. This is when I really started to figure out the power of ChatGPT. It was something that I could go back and forth with. It was like having my own personal assistant. If I wanted a script to change, I could just ask it to make it more funny, more conversational, shorter, or whatever. But it wasn't all perfect. In fact, it was far from it. Here. Let me explain. I've seen some people talk about this on Twitter, and I started to notice it myself when I was writing these scripts. And I noticed that the scripts from ChatGPT appeared to be correct, or good even. They seem well thought out, and at times pretty interesting. But that was at first glance. As I started to dig deeper, it felt as though ChatGPT was really just an amazing bullshitter and didn't know all that much. I'm noticing a lot of the times it's doing this kind of remix thing. It looks like it's giving you a new answer. It might look like it's giving you more detail, but it really is kind of just the same content, just reworded. It's trying to appear as if it looks really smart. When you kind of dig into it, it might not be as thoughtful as you thought it would be. So I had to watch out for that because if you're not careful, the AI will make you think that it's way smarter than it actually is. At this point, I was starting to understand even more what ChatGPT was capable of. Instead of it being a supercomputer that can do anything with ease, it was more like a really dumb employee that had to be watched and directed every step of the way. Theoretically, it can do anything, but you still need to check its work and watch it, at least when it comes to storytelling and script writing. I think this is a good start. I'm pretty amazed by how easy it is to use. This is super fascinating. On the day that I'm filming this video, we're only like a week into this chat GPT thing, so it's only gonna learn, it's only gonna get better. I'm excited to see what the rest of the week brings. 
Now we were on to day two. After figuring out the writing and idea side of things, it was now time to figure out how we were going to make these videos. This one was a little overwhelming. ChatGPT is arguably the leader when it comes to AI creation for text and information. But then there's AI tools that can create images and video. How some of them work is they take from a library of images. For instance, Midjourney takes from the millions of images that are on ArtStation and then it creates an AI generated image based off your prompts. And there's lots of different tools out there. Things like Dolly, Lexica, Runway ML, and so much more. But there was one tool in particular that I hadn't checked out yet, and that was Stable Diffusion. You may have seen videos like this on TikTok or Twitter, and those actually come from Stable Diffusion. They create images and then blend them together, creating this weird sort of trippy look. And since we're making videos, I figured we should try to find a tool that focuses on just that. All right, and so turns out Stable Diffusion Fusion was not as difficult as I thought. Uh, I followed this like 20 minute YouTube tutorial and I ended up being able to do uh, this. Pretty basic, but that is AI generated video and it took me like 45 minutes to do. And basically what I did here is follow the tutorial and the main thing to keep in mind is the prompts that you give it. So I gave it some of those prompts and then I gave it some specifications on exactly what I want it to do. I think I'm going to mess around with this for a little bit longer and see what else I can get. All right, so at first glance, I was really excited about Stable Diffusion, but the more I thought about it, the more I realized that this may not be the tool for the job. We were trying to make historical videos after all. The Stable Diffusion videos were cool, but they also look a little nightmarish. And I do admit, I maybe could have messed around with this tool a little bit more to see if there was more uses we could have had with it, but time was running out and it was time to move on. And that brought me to our next tool, Pictory. This one we don't need to spend much time on. It wasn't that great. What this one does differently compared to other AI software is it takes from a stock footage library and then based off your script, it's taking from that library and putting it into a video for us. Let's see what we get. I mean, this doesn't look great to be honest. It's showing just kind of a bunch of a stock footage, which I find isn't very engaging with online video. I mean, it was super quick and easy, but... I don't know, as kind of just like the base AI with one it gave us, I would say like that is not a great video. So I think we're gonna keep searching. Now, don't get me wrong. The tool looked like it could have been super useful and I can see where people might use it, especially for marketing style videos. It just wasn't gonna work with us since we're trying to get some viral hits on TikTok and most videos there look like this. Cheers. So we were 0 for 2 for potential AI video tools, and time was starting to run out. I found this pretty cool one called Synthesia, something like that. I don't know how you pronounce this, but this one does seem pretty cool because it is an AI generated host. You actually have someone that looks pretty lifelike and they can host your video. So instead of it just being a voice, you actually have a real human face. The only issue is that it looks like you need to pay for it. And that's another thing I should mention. These AI tools can get really expensive, especially if you're trying to make a lot of videos. If you're trying to make anything decent or you want to make a lot of something, you're going to need to give up some cash. Yeah, I'll let you mess around with this for a bit and I'll show you guys what I found. Okay, we can totally work with this. We finally found an AI tool that we can use to make videos. I was hoping to find an AI tool that would just make the videos for us and those are out there, but the ones I did find were really underwhelming. I feel overall the AI video space is still pretty underdeveloped, but I imagine it will get way better as time goes on. So I made the call to make the videos with the AI host and then I would edit the rest. And with that, it was now time to get started making these videos. After making a couple of videos, we were now on to day three. I made the TikTok page with a profile picture from Mid Journey. That's JFK if he was 80 years old according to Midjourney. And it was now time to post our videos. All right, so we just posted our first video, as you can see there. I'm gonna post a couple more videos today. We'll just wait and see if it works now. All right, so we're nearing the end of day one. The channel is doing okay could be a lot better. We basically have only 10 followers, which sucks. We have 715 likes, which is decent, um, with only two videos posted. And we have one video with almost 20,000 views and then another 
together with almost a thousand beers. Another interesting thing to know is that there's a couple comments on one of the videos and only one of them asked the question, is this AI? This was either because the AI was so real people didn't notice or maybe they just didn't care. With the rise of things like digital influencers or VTubers, stuff like this is just becoming more normalized. So maybe people are just used to stuff like this. And now we were at the end of day three. We had a video that was doing okay, but we still had some issues. We're definitely a little bit under our follower goal that we want to hit since we only have 10, which sucks, but I'll give it the night and we'll see where we're at in the morning. Hello. It's uh, the next day now. It's been about a little under 24 hours since I uploaded. So yeah, now I'm going to check the stats and see what we have. Holy, okay. Wow. Oh my God. Wow. So the stats are a lot better now. One of the videos has 620,000 views on it. We have 300 followers and we have 30.7 thousand likes. So we finally got a hit. Just kidding. It actually wasn't that hard. We got in our second video, which I couldn't really ask for a better start. We had 300 followers, which was a fair chunk of the way there to our 1,000 follower goal. And we had something to build off of as well. Our first hit came from this weird historical competition called Gurning. So the idea for at least a couple of our next videos was to do some more of these weird historical competitions and see if we could get the same result. But that wasn't all I wanted to try. As I was starting to think more about these AI tools, I was realizing how I could not only use them to be faster, but also more creative. I got inspired by this article that I saw from the New York Times. It's really just this fun Photoshop idea that this guy did, and it was basically him Photoshopping famous historical figures from back in the day and seeing what they would look like if it was modern day. He did George Washington here. He also did Julius Caesar as well, which is pretty cool. So my idea was what if we kind of take that concept and instead of Photoshopping it ourselves, we let the AI do the work for us and see if we can get anything interesting. So this is what we've gotten so far. That's Socrates. That is Rene Descartes. There's Aristotle. And also I used another AI tool to actually get them to move. And I didn't stop there. Before I knew it, I was using AI to make all kinds of historical figures. This was after I asked ChatGPT which figures I should recreate. I ended up making modern day versions of Abraham Lincoln, Shakespeare, Nikola Tesla, and so much more. Some of the results were better than others with the AI only being able to interpret my prompts so well, but others look downright amazing. And I made them in like five minutes. So I made some more videos with these historical recreations, as well as some of the more traditional videos we made before. Got some updates. Wow. Yeah. Oh my God. Yeah. Holy shit. So we got over a million views on our second video and we have 625 followers. And that brought us to the end of day four. We uploaded six out of the 10 videos, had 600 followers, and our Gurning video had over 1.1 million views, which means we had one out of the two viral videos we needed to get. All right, so it's now the next day. We've uploaded a couple more videos and let's see how they're doing. Okay, wow. So we now have over 1,200 followers. Our Gurning video has 2 million views now, which is insane. But the other ones have just totally flopped. Our goal was to get 1,000 followers in a week, which we hit, and it's awesome. But I'm going to make a couple more videos because I don't want it to just be this one video that carried it. I want to see what else we can get out of this. At this point, I was starting to think that the second video we uploaded was just a fluke. Sure, AI is capable of viral videos, but is it something that you can repeat? We hit our goal of 1,000 followers, but we still weren't done yet. We had to get at least one more viral video by the end of the week. And that's what I was determined to figure out in this next batch of videos. I continued on with the idea of the AI historical representations because I really believed in that idea and I figured it was a great way to showcase the AI tools. Plus, I ended up making a couple more of the regular videos that we made at the start of the week. And then we uploaded the final videos and waited to see what happened. All right, so we uploaded all the videos yesterday and now it is time for our final count or at least the final count of this recording. So far, we didn't have any hits really besides our second video, the one that got over a million views. Yeah, let's see what we got. Okay, awesome. Okay, so we got another hit. That's great. It's at almost 200K views now. So we finally got another hit. And what was awesome is it was the video recreating historical figures that won. I will 
admit this video wasn't even that great. I mean, look at this supposedly real life depiction of Cleopatra. She looks like a white lady. And a lot of the comments did call me out for this, but again, it wasn't about the AI, it was about the content itself. And with that, we achieved two out of our three original goals. We got to 1,000 followers, had two viral hits, and unfortunately, we didn't upload the 10 videos. We only uploaded nine, but I didn't really feel the need to upload any more. Also, I will say I made 10 videos, but I didn't end up uploading it. The video was about Joseph Stalin, and I do worry that TikTok might suppress the content a little bit. I just figured it was best to play it safe and not upload the video. But we did make 10, so I guess that's kind of a half point maybe. Okay, so it's been a couple weeks since I started editing this video, and I've gone some time to think about this whole week a little bit more. Will AI take our jobs? In a way, yeah, they will. Now, I'm not saying there's gonna be a full AI takeover, but AI will probably take some jobs very soon, if they haven't already. I can already see applications of how it can write scripts, research, be an assistant, create videos, create art, the list goes on. And who knows what else it might be capable of in the near future. But that doesn't mean we should be afraid of it. And I don't think that's gonna take all jobs either. As I showed during this process, if you're using AI, you kinda need to hold its hand every step of the way. It can help, but you still need to guide it. Not only did AI make things easier and more efficient, which I kind of expected, but it was also making me more creative. After I started learning a little bit more about these tools, I started to think about all the different ways I can apply it. And I think overall, if you're someone who is creative or you're interested in AI in any way, I think it's really up to us to figure out how we can use these tools in our day-to-day -day lives. So if you don't want your job to get taken over by a robot, get ahead of it and figure out what these AI tools can do. Mess around a bit and see what AI is capable of. I know that's what I'm going to be doing. Oh, and I also thought it would be interesting to check in on our TikTok page again now that it's been a couple of weeks, so let's go ahead and do that. Now we have 11,000 followers, so we got... 10 times more than we thought we were gonna get. Uh, and this is just with the nine videos and that gurning video from the start has 12 million views on it, which is insane. That's more than my entire YouTube catalog has. So I don't know whether to feel proud or sad about that fact, but yeah.